Given that it's wrestling in the late 80s, I'm going to go with the most racist one. Hey, what's going on, everybody? King of Chaos, Logan Black here, and you're watching Pro Wrestling Explained. To my wife. Hi, wife. Hi, husband. Today, we're going to be watching one of my absolute favorites of all time, The Great Muda. This is from the late 80s when Muda had made his way over to the States. Do you know anything? Does that name sound familiar at all to you? Nope. What are your feelings on foreign slash Japanese bad guys in professional wrestling or entertainment in general? Uh, I'm going to guess there's going to be some xenophobia going on. Lots and lots of xenophobia, but... My favorite. In my opinion, Muda is that brilliant that a bit of that is hidden, at least for the character. So let's go ahead and check out the great Muda. So this is the Great Muda. Okay. He's, uh, at the time, there were certainly guys who would do, you know, the evil foreigner gimmick, but nobody was pulling off what Muda was doing. And Gary Hart is his manager. Gary Hart was the manager of, like, all the foreign guys, like, all the, the weird foreign guys mm -hmm. were always under Gary Hart. Can he not see through it is that why he's being led around <laughs> I, you know what i'm pretty sure that was the gimmick and i it's the genius of it because if boom like you're unmasking him and all right now now it's time to kill now it's time to attack because you know 1989 the foreign that's what the foreigners are there for of course in 89 <laughs> of course what else would they be there for certainly not certainly not diversity <laughs> This is great, too, because, again, everyone's watching in on this and, like, what is he prepared to do? Especially if you've never seen anyone, you know, do this or never seen Mood Alive. See, like, what's going on? Like, is he praying? Is he, you know, focusing? You know, what is, what, what is this crazy thing? And then, boom, he comes out with this. The evil green mist, the poison mist. All right. So, trivia moment number one. As we do that, he's putting his fingers into his mouth because any strike now has poison in it. Oh, okay. Like a course. cobra. Yeah, no, why not? <laughs> so, trivia moment. Uh, Muda had three different types of mist that developed over the years. The green one was poison. Um, the black one was like, you, it's it, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Like if he had black mist, and then the red one, I believe, would blind you. If I'm not mistaken. I'm sure there's going to be somebody in the comments, ah, going nuts and, you know, going after me. <laughs> so the guy whose ass he's kicking here is none other than Gangrel. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Very different look. Certainly. I'm pretty sure this is before he got those uh, teeth put in. You know, before he was able to develop a physique like he had in the other match we watched. <laughs> like I was saying, Gary Hart was somebody who would always have, like, the weird foreign wrestlers... And the great Kabuki was a guy who Gary Hart managed who did something very similar, but nobody was as athletic or as, you know, the way that Muda moves mm -hmm. is just absolutely, everything is just brilliant in how he does. And, there's a, you know, the dude is well known as being a massive, massive legend of Japan and the States. I personally think that him and The Undertaker, the two best gimmicks that the business has ever seen. All right. There's no, I mean, this is just... You can see before the match with the mist, but in general, nobody knows how the hell that guy was able to make that mist happen. I've watched dozens upon dozens of matches with Muda, and you can't see him put anything in his mouth. Very magical. Uh, yeah, the mystical arts. Trivia number two. Uh, Great Muda had a nickname. What was it? Was it A... The Japanese buzzsaw, B, the ghost of Okinawa, or C, the pearl of the Orient. Given that it's wrestling in the late 80s, I'm going to go with the most racist one and say the pearl of the Orient. You would be correct. <laughs> of, course. of course I am. Oh, so he's not just giving him a top wrist lock here. He's like grabbing in on his like armpit. And yeah, he gave up to what is technically an armpit lock. He's tickling Wait. his thighs as well. I apparently. mean, I was going to say, it more <laughs> looks like a tickle fight in this moment. I'm just waiting for him to spit the mystic. I don't think he is. Oh, mm. nope. Nope, just licking his finger. Yeah. Oh. Just absolutely brilliant performance, in my opinion. Just in general, the Muda is just an absolutely brilliant character that I think, you know, you, 
I think anybody should be able to appreciate. Mm -hmm. As we see the replay of the incredible armpit lock onto Dave the Vampire. (laughs) Well, not a vampire yet. Nope. He wasn't bitten yet. It's not nighttime. (laughs) Yeah. So, now that we're finished with the match, what are your feelings on the Great Muda? Uh, it's very talented. I can certainly see why you consider him one of the greats. Absolutely. Would uh, would you be interested in seeing other great Muda matches? Are you sold on the character? Yeah, I'd say so. What was your favorite part of that match? Please oh, tell man. me it was the mist. No, Please it was, don't. It was definitely, it was definitely so up there, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Another win for me. That's going to do it for this episode of Pro Wrestling Explained to my wife. You can check me out on all social media, King of Chaos NYC, and follow the entire family of social media of the Year One Wrestling Podcast at Year the Number One Pod. And for you, you can follow me on Instagram at Banalange. Uh, don't have anything in particular going on these days, but you know, some powerlifting, some pets, generally a fun time. Well, until next time, guys. Love each other, love yourselves, and love pro wrestling.